Now, when it comes to throwing, throw like a pitcher. When you get into position to throw a ball, your left foot should be a little bit in front of you, like in foot 11. After the ball is in your glove, you take a half step back so you can push off with your right foot. That little back step is like cocking a gun. See foot 12. Getting the ball out of your glove with two fingers, if possible, like in foot 13 and throw it directly overhand as in 4014 and always follow through. That's the only way you can get something on the ball, especially if you're making a long throw. If the ball is hit away from you to another fielder, backing up is a must. Wherever the ball goes, you go. Getting behind the left fielder if he's making the play or the right fielder if he's making it. If the ball gets by them, possibly you can save it. Backing up the infielders too. If the ball takes a bad hop and get away from the second baseman or the shortstop, you can feel it and keep the runner from getting two bases. One thing you may think about as a fielder is what to do when a fly ball goes for the fence. The fence can look pretty frightening when you're running towards it, especially if you haven't reached full of height yet. Now, if you're worried about hitting it and you tense up, look at photo 15 and 16. Chances are you won't get hurt. It's when you relax that you can avoid painful injuries. Now, here's how to control the fence rather than have it control you. Always keep your back to the fence when you're running to catch a fly ball. Learn to bounce off the fence with your back. That way you'll never hit your head. The trick to staying relaxed is to know exactly when you're going to connect. In the majors, there's a warning track with grab on it, just past the grass. All the professional fielders look for this warning track when they are heading back into the fence. It tells them to relax and slow down. Since all your fields aren't uniform, you may find another way of judging your distance from the fence. So practice playing the fence when you're not under pressure. Then, when the circumstances comes in the real game, you'll be in control. Learning to play center field is a very hard job. You got to practice and practice, then practice some more. You're going to have to learn it by making a lot of errors. Just don't let it destroy you. Fight it as hard as you can. Then the next day, go out and find out why you made those errors. Did you hurry too fast? Did you take your eye off the ball? An error can be a very good teacher. I made four errors in one game, and we lost the game because of them. Even though I'm a professional ball player, I couldn't sleep that night. But the next day, I went to the ballpark. I got a home run and a couple of hits. I got my confidence back by staying loose and having fun. Naturally, you're going to be nervous on the day of a game. One thing I learned that helps is to do something to keep your mind off of baseball. Now, for example, watching a TV program you like, even reading a book, do anything to help you relax. You feel better and you play better when it comes time to get on the field. That's another thing you can do, whether it's practicing or the real thing. This is to remember why you started playing baseball in the first place. It's the same reason I started playing and why I still play. Baseball is fun, and as long as you're having fun playing baseball, relaxing is not a hard thing to do. Kids, I, I hope that you enjoy the record that I try to present to you. Uh, now, I'm going to talk to you a little serious uh, myself. I enjoy baseball, and I've played it for 20 years myself. Uh, the most important thing I have learned in playing uh, over those years is that sportsmanship is very important. I know it's very hard for you to go out and lose a ball game and come home and try to laugh and be happy with your family, but this, to me, is very important if you can do this. This shows to me that you are growing up, and sportsmanship as I see it right now, is winning and losing. Everybody can laugh when they are winning, but what happens if you lose a championship? What happens if uh, you hurt your toe and you can't go out and help your teammates win? 
But you can be a good sportsmanship even being on the bench as far as your teammates are concerned. So as you grow older, sportsmanship will mean more to you than it does right now. So I, for one, feel that look in your dictionary, ask your mother and father what is the meaning of sportsmanship in all kinds of sports.